The Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report with Dom and Charles. And before we go on, Dom, I just want to say, I am storming out of here. I am storming out. But Charles, this is That's on the it. record. I've, I've had it with you. But we said this I've, was on the record. No. Also, we, why are you wearing that weird name tag? Why are you wearing a Woolies name tag? Oh, excuse me. I'm just going to casually uh, sip some water from this bottle as well. <laughs> Oh, see, I'm just a man of the people. Yeah, and you're wearing a Woolies crew polo shirt. That's. Do you expect me to believe that the CEO of Woolworths wears like the, the thing that someone like a Woolies Metro would wear when they're stacking the shelves? Yeah, well, when you're just pulling in seven million dollars a year, Dom, uh, you just you just one of the workers. You just you just one of them. You just. This is a satirical technique where we pretend <laughs> that uh, one of us, Charles, in this case is Brad Banducci, CEO of Woolworths. And I must say, the person who tweeted, I think it was yesterday or the day before, Brad Banducci to resign to spend more time with his family in mm. five, four, three. Yeah, absolutely nailed it. Um, he was a to Let's have a listen to the audio before we go any further because this is, this is timeless stuff. His words are that Retired, we have... Retired, by the way. I, I don't think you would impugn his integrity and his understanding of competition law. I'm just saying the world has got much more competitive. He retired 18 months ago. He's not... OK, let's, we'll t- can we take that out? Is that OK? Sorry, let's just keep going. Um, so are we going to... Sorry, what are you unhappy with? I shouldn't have said that about right about him being retired. Well, you did say it. Yeah, and I, I mean, he, he is retired, but I, I shouldn't have said that, Angus. Are, you, are we going to leave it in there if we are? Well, I mean, if, if we're on the record. Okay. You said it. I mean... You know, let's let's move on. But yeah, yeah, no, um, I'm, I think I'm done, guys. Uh, you know, right, I, right, I do right, this right. with good intent. You know, I don't do this with bad intent. No. Well, you're walking out, really? No, no, no. Can we just talk no, no, right for a second? Let me just. Can we just have a minute? Let's pause. We'll, we'll be finished in a sec. Charles, I love that Rod Sims is able to get someone to to resign, a major yeah. CEO, while not even running the ACCC anymore. That is power. I know. It's the opposite of what Brad was saying. <laughs> like, that guy's still got it. 18 still months it. out. Absolutely. Yeah. And Brad has $24 million in Woolworth shares, so he's still got it as well. Oh, what? He's got 24? I didn't see that. I, I knew that he was paid $7 million. Is that, was that his exit bonus, $24 million? Yeah, and, and you'll never believe the oh. amazing... Uh, Metaphor that all the reports, I read multiple stories about this today, and they all said, guess what he's got in his trolley? $24 million. And I was like, it's not a fucking trolley. Fuck off. He's way too rich. Hey, let's talk more about this after we make some money ourselves. Okay, so I'm really regretting not talking about this story yesterday. On yesterday's We would have looked so prescient, wouldn't we? Yes, because I, I, I was saying to people yesterday I, like, I was one of the people who was predicting it, it was like he, he's going to be gone by the end of the week and we are like ah uh, i hate it when I mean, my predictions don't go on record early enough but i'm it, it, i'm counting this one when you look at the footage i mean i must say mm, my initial obvious. thought was this is not a person who is good at this job no exactly so the thing is that a ceo of a fucking duopoly has mm. one job he has one fucking job, which is to maintain the social license, to appear like this nice guy who isn't going to fuck you over. Because uh, mm, he's just in a polo shirt and he's got a name tag on because yeah. he's just one of the guys. So you can see how his PR team sort of went, okay, we'll, we'll make you look like just one of the guys and you can yeah, be yeah. all friendly and things like that. But from the word go in the interview, he was like, argument. Like, I think it's sort of one of those things where you sort of think of a CEO as calculating enough to be able to go, okay, well, actually, I'm going to just... You know, box the ABC journalist in as yeah. being as being argumentative, and that's and my strategy is going to go on the attack, make him look like he's just doing a hatchet job on us, mm. and and that's how I'll get through. But actually, you sort of look at it and you go, no, I don't even think that was the strategy. I think he just literally lost his lost control. He just yeah, and and probably actually he's been in meetings his whole life. He's probably failed upwards across his hmm. entire career being a white man that's what you tend to do and sure. he's got to the point where whenever he gets a bit you know sick of meetings Tully. or you hmm. know grumpy or you know he's having a bad day cuz the golf didn't 
go quite his way, you know, on the front nine or whatever. He he just goes, ah, oh, I'm storming out of here, and that works in a corporate environment where, yeah, you know, it, there's no you're accountability. The boss. Yeah, worships exactly. you. Yeah, but Charles, I imagine he's part of the problem. Like, can you imagine the pricing reviews at Woolies going through, uh, and, and probably the underlings very gen- gently saying, look, Brad, um, people are kind of uh, d- doing it a bit tough. Could we maybe just reduce? the margins just a little bit like just we'll mm. look good if we yeah. i don't know if we just make only a couple of billion instead of many billion dollars yeah. in terms of our bottom line and he's going no no get out of here and yeah. he's like you're not, you're not saving the punter a cent yeah but charles this is the thing i wanted to mention mm. so strangely enough you're doing the wankonomics tour at the moment right you're yes. uh, in adelaide selling a lot of tickets you're doing corporate language it's yeah, a we're, guide to how to we're be in te- the corporate world we're teaching people how to yeah how to speak in corporate speak how to how to make their, their communication less clear and more incomprehensible. I mean, have you had to change your materials to, to cover this? Because it, what he needed, perhaps he should come and see the show, he needed platitudes. He needed yeah. nothingness. He, he sort of needed to be able to say nothing while he could have said, oh, look, we're very concerned. We'll, yes. we'll get back to you. We'll circle back. Yes. Um, we'll commission a report. Yes. I've got my best people looking at this. Let's put, uh, let's put a pin in that. Let's, let's put, put a, a pin, pin in, in this. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's circumstances beyond our control. Yeah. There's externalities. Uh, you know, and, don't you hate it when externalities make things impossible to solve? And and you know, I hear you. I hear yeah. you. I hear yeah. you. Yeah, uh, I know where you're coming from. Um, yeah, uh, who no, do you want me to sack? Like that's what you can say. You can put it back onto the person. I could. I could bring prices down. Which of our uh, people who do you want me to make redundant? Yeah, no, exactly. You want me to sack? Yeah, put it back on the ABC journalist. Mm, okay, exactly. Who do you want me to sack? Yeah, because because yeah. I can. If you, yeah. if you want me to make less money for our shareholders, yeah. who are ordinary Australian super funds, yeah, I can I can just sack people. Mm. But here's the thing you might not know about me, Charles. In an earlier life, uh, more than half my life ago now, mm. I worked as a management consultant at Woolworths. Oh, really? I did, and so you're not th- supposed to say who your clients are. Not for very long, admittedly, mm. but. It's pretty funny. It's a pretty strange environment so there at Bella Vista. Is is the whole Woolworths duopoly thing your fault? Are you to blame for Woolworths? I love the notion that I had anything <laughs> like the amount of power that I could make a recommendation. Did, so you had to go out to there to Bella Vista, did you? To Bella Vista. For to people, one Woolworths way, for Bella people Vista. Who've never been to Bella Vista, which I think would be a hundred percent of people. It is it's like corporate utopian dystopia or something like it's sort of this campus out in northwest sydney um Mm. which is designed to be i suppose appealing to corporates but it's sort of like it's very american like you have to drive to middle of nowhere yeah Yeah, it's a corporate park yeah Uh, it was a very long cab from the shiny office tower in the city that much i can tell you and we all did it all the time and charged it back but the funny thing that i can mention is that the name tag thing is very, very real. So when we were there, I actually found it very odd. It was almost like a cult. Like everyone, even the very senior executives that we were there with, like um, uh, I think at the time the guy called Roger Corbett was sponsoring our work who later became the CEO and all, the, all that kind of stuff. Hmm. They would wear these weird name tags like they worked in the supermarket as though they were just regular guys. So the high on Brad thing, oh. they all do it oh, at right. the Woolies campus. So Absolutely. He, that wasn't even a strategy. That was just him. I, I don't know about the polo shirt. That might have been a strategy. But no, they <laughs> wear the name tags. As the, but just trying to pretend oh, I'm the same as you, oh. minimum wage, you know, shelf stacking person. I just happen to make $7 million a year. The other thing they told us hilariously was just wear a white shirt. Like don't don't dress like corporate fancy. Definitely don't wear cufflinks. We were told absolutely no cufflinks. And in management consulting, cufflinks, yeah, uh, or certainly that's... back then, like people had fucking monogram cufflinks. That was the kind of wank fest hmm. that we were in on. Um, but no, we we were looking at supermarket pricing. Uh, that was the thing we were working on, and it was very interesting. And and was it all about making it feel like you were getting a bargain, but actually you're not? Like is that it? Was that the sort of psychology? Because it's all about psychology, isn't it? Like, like well, it, I can tell you, my favorite I mean, this brand is more than of muesli. I'll, I'll give you an example. My favorite brand of muesli. Oh, that looks fancy. Yeah, it's fancy. Dorset cereals. Gosh, you're doing well at it in Adelaide, yeah. aren't you? You're making nine dollars. Breaking in the coin. Nine dollars is what you've got to pay for it. Except every second week it goes on sale, and it's two for nine dollars, right? And yeah. so, 
And so you always buy it for four dollars fifty, and you go, "Oh, I've got a real bargain." And then you realise, "Well, hang on, it's still a rip off of four dollars fifty. But the psychology is you've yes. been anchored to this price point, which is so ridiculous that then you don't pay attention to the rip off. That's exactly what they do. And the great thing is that they get suppliers to fund those like two for one offers and all this kind of stuff. So they're making money either way. Mm. When you see those specials, yeah, Woolies is making. And coal, same thing. They're making money from the suppliers to try and move more stuff. But the thing I can tell you that we were working on, mm. uh, and I think I think I don't think I'm breaking any confidentiality rules. Twenty years later, is that there's a massive pricing pricing database which I had access to. Mm. Like I I had the access to every single price for every single SKU in the whole of Woolies across the country. Mm. And where you are, where the store is, determines the price. Yes. So if you're in a Silvertail area, it's going to be a lot more. But if you're right next to, I don't know, let's say a German discount supermarket, yes. you best believe they monitor all the prices there and kind of adjust them to be much the same. So go and shop at a supermarket, you yeah, know, next, next to, to an, an Aldi. Aldi. Right. Uh, and you'll pay your Or payments. go and shop at Aldi. <laughs> <laughs> you could. Yeah. But the hilarious thing we were working on was this philosophy called um, everyday low price. And the concept was that instead of... Um, Instead of having the high, the high and low pricing like you're talking about, yes. we just say this item, we've locked in the price, and Coles still does this. Yes. Um, it's always going to be the same price. And Walmart invented this and sort of promoted it. And I love the notion that it was this sort of revolutionary concept that we're just going to make the price low every day. Like, mm. oh, my God, what a brilliant <laughs> idea. Let's pay millions of dollars for this little, little gem. <laughs> Uh, so well, yeah, the rot started with me, Charles. The rot started with me it, 20 uh, years ago. But it's it's funny you should mention management consultants because actually um, the CEO, Brad, uh, whatever his name is, Banducci. Brad Banducci, yeah. Banducci uh, released a, a statement explaining his departure. or I think it was the Woolworths sort of PR team released it uh, mm. earlier today. And um, immediately James, who I do Wankonomics with, texted me the text of it and said, do you think they actually came along to our show? Because it, it literally reads like a, a segment that we've got in Wankonomics about how wow. to write your brand story. I'll read it out to you. Let's do that after this. The Chaser Report. Less news, more often. So, so James texts me and goes, just saw this statement from Woolworths. They must have come to our show. And this is the this is the statement. We are thrilled to announce the appointment of Amanda. There's some new woman. Uh, as the Amanda Bardwell. Amanda CEO, Bardwell. Yeah. As the group CEO of Woolworths Group, as the group starts its next century of creating better experiences together for a better tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and he's honestly... That's great. It's like, that, I love it. A better tomorrow. The, the, <laughs> other part of that, um, the other part of that statement that I really loved was that it said they conducted an extensive international search mm. and decided to promote the head of like Woolies X or like the obvi- the person who was working on the like new different funky Woolies. All those Woolies that are like a convenience store. Oh, the come Metro, out of this thing, yeah. thing called Woolies X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the obvious next CEO, after an extensive international search, spending presumably millions of dollars of shareholder money, they've just found the obvious yeah. person but to do the job. But don't you think the whole thing, uh, like, so let's go through the thing. The CEO stuffs up and has a fucking disastrous interview mm. on Monday. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere by... Tuesday afternoon, his position becomes completely untenable, and suddenly mm. it's like, oh no, well, we've actually we've actually been searching for months. Uh, no, no, like uh, he was always about to retire straight after the fucking car <laughs> crash. Of a show. I think it's it a, says here it's, it's, it's says untrue. Here. It's just not um, true. I can be emphatic about this point," said the chair, uh, Scott Perkins. Um, I can be absolutely emphatic. The process has been in train. There was no change to the timetable, no expedition at all. Um, you know, it was always – and the external factors didn't have anything to do with it. How extraordinary. Look, we, you can come out and say that. But I suppose the point is if you are as powerful as Woolworths, if you can literally just price your price at whatever you want and mm. just, you know, price gouge the entire Australia, of course you can also lie to your shareholders. Like it's just part and parcel of what you are. That's what, that's why the CEO stormed out of that interview because, you know, it, he was being held to account. That is not part of what being in Woolworths is about. Well, Charles, unless, and this is my theory about it, unless the CEO rang up and said, mate, not great, you know, not a great interview there with Four Corners. Mm, the chair. Let's chat about it. Yeah. yeah, Scott Perkins rang and said, Brad, you know, we, yeah, we've yeah. got to do some brand management. And Brad just went, no, 
I'm out of here. <laughs> exactly. How dare you? This is off. This is off the record. Yeah. But the thing is, what I don't understand is because I think part of the whole thing was like he wanted to take something off the record that he'd said on camera. Like, yeah. surely as. You know, somebody who works at Woolworths, you'd be used to being on camera. Like, sort <laughs> yes, of like I've enjoyed the chase of headlines on this. Yeah, 71. Oh, 71. Someone's recording without your p- explicit permission, yeah. are they? All oh, right. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how that happens. 71 cameras in per Woolworths store. Like, when you walk into a Woolworths store, an average of 71 cameras are watching you. And they want you to know mm. that as well. They want you to know that you're well, they have to. B- basically Did, in the gulag of Woolworths. <laughs> Well, some of these retailers didn't have that um, advertised. Like I remember Kmart had all these cameras tracking you when you walk in, even with facial recognition, mm. um, building customer profiles of people, and they didn't announce that. So that's why they've got all these signs up. The thing that surprised me during that interview, Charles, is that after he stormed off, we didn't hear clean up an I one, clean up an I one, giant mess been a fine. But it, See what, I did there? what I reckon is going to be really interesting is whether uh, the evil Greens' plan comes to fruition, mm. right? Because uh, Nick McKinnon, him, who's the green senator who's in charge of this part of you know their D- didn't he come platform. on the show and take a swing at them at not he long did, ago? yeah uh, mm. quite a while ago friend of the show Nick McKim he tweeted today that this was actually all part of their plan and the the greens plan yes and the getting this senate inquiry into the cost of living and stuff was actually the first step in corroding the social license of the duopoly that is Coles and Woolworths right and that you know, the next step is obviously to start breaking up that market power uh, by, you know, getting them to sell off part of their stores and actually meaning that they don't have this enormous stranglehold over the supply of groceries to Australia. Gosh, I wonder where the Greens got the idea of, like, breaking up a cosy duopoly <laughs> of uh, <laughs> two entrenched groups that don't need to work very hard anymore. Um, it's strange, don't you? I wonder yeah, why, wonder why they're into that. Yeah. Um, but how are they going to do that? Are they going to start a supermarket chain? Are we going to get, like, Bant Mart? Well, did, wasn't Franklin started by Whitlam? Like I'm pretty sure that was, was it really? a, that was a Whitlam yeah. era. I don't know whether it was started. It, certainly, it came in under a, a sort of Whitlam era set of market reforms. So yeah, no, I mean, but it, well, the obvious thing to do is to literally break it up because part of the problem, as you said, part of the problem is that they own sixty seven percent of the consumer market. But mm. actually, just as big a problem is the fact that if you're a supplier, you are basically at the at the mercy of these, you know, if you're a farmer or a, any sort of wholesaler, yeah. you're at the mercy of Coles and Woolworths. And the only way you can deal with that is to actually split them into five and go, actually, we're going to have proper competition so that – because what, it's not so much a monopoly that's the problem, it's the monopsimony, if you want to get into technical – Is that a word? Yes, monopsimony. Monopsimony? When you've got that a – sounds like a bad – that sounds like a marriage where lots of people are involved. <laughs> it's when a monopsimony is – when there is a single buyer rather than a single seller. Oh, Medicare. Yeah, and and a, a, a single buyer has enormous power over their I suppliers so. because you're the only person buying or the only organisation buying. So that's why, um, yeah, breaking it up. And and Nick McKim's going, okay, step two, let's do it. Well, Charles, this just makes me think it's time at mm. last to put our money where our mouth is oh, yeah. and launch a supermarket yes. chain. Yes, um, I've always wanted to. If we to could do something use. really nimble, something yes. very technology based, mm. maybe just cut out maybe don't even have retail supermarkets no, at all no. just really innovate uh, maybe build some little warehouses close to where people live yes. and just get stuff delivered, I don't know, on an electric bike or something yep. get a whole bunch of people to come over and we pay them proper wages and insurance and stuff Yep. and they just order on an app it'd be very very quick Yep. Um, it'd be really great. And because we were paying them a decent living wage, yep. we'd go broke in six months. Yes. Then we would sell our brand assets to Woolworths. To Woolworths. Yes. And we'd be Milk Run. Yes. And we'd make a lot of money. Yes. Well, I, I think we are very set up to be to do the first part of that plan. Like setting mm, up a, a badly run app that loses money. Is sort of. Didn't we do business. that already? Yeah, <laughs> oh, we had a chaser app at one point. That was a lot of fun. It actually worked quite well. Yeah. Uh, just lost, lost a lot of money. Well, that's a good idea. Um, the other thing that they've started to do now, and I just was reading about this the other day, mm. is that the private label thing, where they have a suite of their own brands, and you can't tell which ones are made by Coles and Woolies. So they've started competing against, for instance, um, whole like manufacturers of spirits. 
yes. by producing their own gins and vodkas and whatever. You can't tell who it who it's from. Well, that, that was in the, that was in the four corners. That was in the four corners. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that and I also discovered shockingly that um, Australia's sort of number one or two retailer in, or, or brand in every single category now is Anko, the Kmart house brand. Yes. Um, where and and well, presumably Woolies and Coles will do the same thing. So that, that you can't even have an independent business anymore. You just have to supply the Woolies and Coles duopoly. I do love the fact that you know, like if you go to Italy, you know, the top brand there is like, um, is it Versace? What are Italian brands? So, is Versace is Italian. Versace, yeah, yeah. And, you know, in in uh, France, it's like Christian Dior or something like that. Yeah, or, or Mo- Moet and Chandon. Or yeah, Mo- like Moet and Chandon. And here it's Anko. Anko. And they're our top. And, you know, even in America, it's like Nike and, you know, and stuff like that. Here it's Anko. In every Came category, up. Anko. Anko. Yep. And, you know, yeah. maybe we should just uh, just yeah. not stop worrying. Sit Lean back and, and, and enjoy the... the, enjoy the... See, and that's I... the problem with Coles and Woolies. Kmart's basically a, a monopoly now. They? They've, they've absorbed Target. Big W is nowhere to be seen. Yeah. Just sit back and buy the cheap Anko shit. As soon as Anko starts retailing groceries, I'm not going to Coles or Woolies anymore. No, nah, exactly. And, uh, and the thing is... Um, the brand values of the most as- successful Australian brand ever is cheap shit from China. That, uh, that's cheap literally their China brand values. That doesn't last for very long. Yeah. 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 But who cares because it was so cheap, just put it in the tip. Yeah. I love it. Fantastic. Can we sell Anco Chaser, Chaser merch? Well, yeah, maybe we should get on that bandwagon. and uh, Just buy their stuff, put a Chaser sticker on it and charge 10% more. No, no, no. The thing that would upsell it is the Anco brand. We should get the, oh, that's the, the Chaser Annual should be called the Anko Annual. The from Anko now on. Annual. Yeah. Now you're talking. Finally a business plan. Yeah, finally a business plan. Our gear is from Road. We're part of the Iconoclast Network. But I'm storming out of here. Good riddance. We've got another CEO ready to go, actually. Craig, get on in here. <laughs>